In this video, we'll be taking a look at some of the pro leash handling techniques I use every day with dogs of all stripes. These will help build your confidence, stability, and ability. Let's check it out. Hey guys, Ian here from Simpatico Dog Training. Now, a few years ago, I put out a video on some basic leash handling skills. Good technique though is always evolving and growing and since then I've picked up some more things and developed my technique in the trenches with hundreds of dogs. I thought it was time to give you updated techniques and templates to work with. These templates will help you build your handling skills and confidence. If you're working on your reactive or aggressive dog, these techniques will be very important components to your work. Even if you're not tackling big behaviors though, if you just want to improve your skills in general, these will be powerful tools you can add to your repertoire. Like most good techniques, this stuff is endless. There's a lot I could share with you, but for this first main lesson, we'll focus on five categories. The base platform, slide locks, leash locks, your center of gravity, and quick draw techniques. We'll start with just this stuff today so you can dip your feet in and get a feel for the basics before getting more technical. I've also put time codes in the YouTube description so you can refer back to just the pieces you want. And of course, there will be other notes and resources down there as well. Now, before we get into the main pieces, let's talk super quickly about your leash. These techniques work best with flat leashes, either leather, biothane, or nylon. Leather and biothane are my personal preferences. I recommend a three quarter inch in width for mid to large dogs or half inch for small dogs. Nylon tends to be wider and rougher, which is why I don't like it as well, but there are some good nylon leashes out there. I don't like rope leashes as these tend to make handling much more uncomfortable. I don't recommend a ski handle leashes unless you have grip issues due to arthritis or something like that. I also don't like traffic handles. They just get in my way and as you'll see with these techniques, you don't need one to hold your dog close anyway. And please stop knotting your leash. Knots actually weaken the material and they're clumsy. After you've worked through the techniques in this video, you won't need knots to hold onto your leash anyways. I have specific recommendations for the brands that I like in our buyer's guide, which is updated regularly and it's free to download on my website. So that you can practice along with me, I recommend attaching your leash to something stable like a post or a piece of furniture. I want you to be able to work with the leash and have it give you enough resistance to practice the handling moves somewhat realistically. Now, let's get to it. One of the most common ways I've seen people hold their leash is like this, with the loop around the wrist kind of like a square knot. This is fraught with problems. You don't have any sensitive control, you can't control leash length, and it chafes your wrist and hand, and you've locked up your joints so you have to use the weakest muscles in your arm. It's a mess, just don't do it. Likewise, don't wrap the leash around your hand. You cannot control your dog effectively with it wrapped like spaghetti on a fork. Again, no sensitive control, no dynamic control of length, and there's an increased potential for serious injury, including dislocating your wrist and even degloving, where the skin is removed from the hand. Let's learn to handle a leash like a pro. Hook the loop on your thumb. Which hand you use depends on what you're trying to do at the time, although ideally you should learn to do all of these techniques with either hand. Everything we do from here on out starts with this, so get used to putting your leash loop on your thumb. Always start with the base platform. The slide lock is a general purpose tool. This is not a walking position per se, but you will move through this position as you move your dog around the world. Start with the base platform, the loop on your thumb and running down across your palm. Bring the leash back up across your palm from pinky side to index side. Grip the leash as shown by pinching the leash between your thumb and index finger. Your thumb will be pointing to the distal end of the leash. This is the slide lock. Notice the length of leash in reserve. Relax your hand and allow the leash to slide through your fingers taking up the excess reserve. You have now increased the active length of the leash. Now place your hand palm up in front of the slide lock and slide it at the leash. Grip the leash with this hand and release the grip on your main hand. Move it up behind your other hand and re-grip. Let go with your other hand and now you've shortened the active part of your leash and put the excess back in reserve. Repeat the process of paying out length and taking it back in. 
Practice this movement at least five times. You should ideally be able to do it without having to look at the leash. Using the base platform like this allows me to stay connected to the leash even when I let go of it with this hand so that I can do other maneuvers without losing the leash. Now, learn to switch hands. This is easily done with an extra step. As before, take your distal hand and slide it up the leash. Grip the leash and stick your thumb out like a horn. This is the receiver for the loop. Release the leash with your main hand and drop the loop onto the thumb of the main hand. Grip the leash, and now the hand is the main hand in the slide lock position. Practice paying out length and switching between hands until it's fluid and smooth. Do this at least five times. As before, you should be able to do this without looking. Touching your thumbs together to make a conduit might be helpful for you. Now, let's get the shoulders involved. Step closer to your tie off so you have a little natural slack in the leash. Instead of sliding your other hand up the leash to take up the slack, leave it where it's at and use your shoulder to take it up. Repeat this five times. Make sure to practice both your left and right sides. The slide lock is a dynamic basic hold. I use this when dogs are in sniff and stroll mode or going potty, what my dad used to call snooping and pooping. It's also especially useful during transitional phases such as getting in and out of the car or navigating doorways and stairs. Now it's time to learn your anchor positions. Anchors are used when you're actually moving and working with your dog. There are four of them and each one has a unique character to it. From the base platform, close your hand around the leash. Your thumb will act like a T-bar. This is the most basic form of the thumb lock and you can do this to hold fast to a long leash. To get to this anchor from the slide lock position, roll your forearm and wrist so that you lay the leash back over and around the thumb. Make a fist around all the straps. The distal end of the leash, that is to say the end running to your dog, should now exit from the pinky side of your palm. It's important that you get all of the pieces of the leash inside your fist. Don't have any strays outside your fingers. This is a move you will use a lot in the real world, so practice moving to the thumb lock from the slide lock and back again. Make sure to practice on both sides at least 10 times. Now, let's get the shoulders involved again. Step closer to your tie out as before so you get some natural slack in the leash. With an overhand grip this time, grab the leash in front of the slide lock with your other hand. Use your shoulder to draw the slack out of the leash, then bring your loop hand back under your other hand and use your other hand to lay the leash over your thumb. Slide your other hand down the bundle and grip the whole bunch with the main hand. Now, you've got a thumb lock with all the excess leash stowed elegantly and safely. Practice this move 10 or more times until you're completely comfortable and smooth with it. Make sure you can do it on both sides. Notice that the clip end of the leash exits on the pinky side. This is the strongest way to hold a leash and you'll notice all of the anchors and safety holds I teach employ this principle. Also notice that the more you decrease the exit angle under your pinky, the more friction you add to the system which makes it more stable. Point your top two knuckles down leash with a 90 degree exit angle for maximum security. The finger lock is very similar to the thumb lock. From the slide lock position, release your bottom three fingers and leave the index finger so you're pinching the leash with your thumb. Roll the leash forward over and around your index finger. Make a fist around all the straps. Your index finger will act like a friction device. The distal end of the leash should now exit from the pinky side of your palm. Again, practice moving between the finger lock and the slide lock seamlessly and make sure you can do it with both hands. From the base platform, take the leash at about the middle, but instead of laying this over the thumb, put it over the index finger. Close the entire leash bundle in your fist. Don't let there be strays outside of your fist. Practice the finger lock until it's smooth and easy for you to find it. As before, you can rotate your hand against the direction of the leash for more friction and control. A smaller angle means tighter control. From the base platform, take the leash at about the middle and bring it up across your palm. Close your hand around the entire leash bundle. The leash should form a kind of S or a serpentine shape as it folds up. This is a fast basic hold. It's not as foolproof as the thumb lock or the finger lock, but it's a fast and elegant method, especially if you have a longer leash and need to take up the length. It's definitely solid enough for most basic movement around with your dog. A lot of folks like to use leashes that have traffic handles on them 
so that they can grab it and hold their dog close, especially if they're working with big behaviors, reactivity, aggression, or just a strong puller. I don't like those because they add all this weight to it, they dangle, if you've got a dog that's a leash biter, it just kind of invites some more of that behavior. So I don't really think it's absolutely necessary though if you have good technique. So here I've got the standard leash, I'm gonna go into an accordion hold, and I've got the leash just as close as I need it to be. I can change the length if I want to, if I wanna go really close on it, I can. If I wanna go a little farther away, a little more relaxed, I can. I want to switch hands, I can, and I don't have any of this extra stuff on the leash. It's really flexible, I can do anything I want with it, and I have just as much control as I would if I had a traffic handle without the extra weight or the bulk. However, the exception to that would be if you have, let's say, limited mobility or you struggle with some joint issues, and manipulating the leash like I'm showing you in this video might be difficult for you. In that case, a traffic handle might be a good idea to help supplement some of the other work. That said, you should still learn how to do some of these templates so that they're all working together. I want you to have a much stronger control of the leash and not to just rely on these small pieces like this because even then they're still kind of clumsy and they're just stop gaps. So as always, your mileage may vary. You can generally use the finger lock, the thumb lock, and the accordion hold more or less interchangeably. Which one you use depends on your personal preference, your hand size, the material of the leash you're using, and the dog you're working with. It may change based on how you're standing, it may even change if you're wearing gloves in the wintertime. So you should be familiar with all three of them. Practice moving and switching between them until you can do it without unnecessary drag. The better you are at this now, the better you'll be when you have to concentrate on other training. The baseball bat anchor is a safety position when you need to brace yourself. Unexpected things are going to happen in the world and you should be ready for them. From any of the anchor positions, simply use your other hand to grip the leash bundle directly underneath. This is a two-handed hold like you'd hold a baseball bat. Stick your elbows to your ribs and bring both hands to your navel. Bend your knees and stick your butt out to lower your center of gravity. This brings us to the next part of our leash handling lesson. You need to stay on your feet and remain stable, especially if you have a strong dog, and especially times two if you have a dog that darts or lunges. Now, the most critical piece here is to change your body orientation. For some reason, a lot of people tend to square up perpendicular behind their dog like they're water skiing. <laughs> Don't do this. Try it against the wall. You'll feel it in your toes as they try to keep you upright. Don't rely on your big toes to do the work. They're too small. Reorient your body and point your hip at your dog. Now you're assuming a triangular shape which has a superior stability and you're using those bigger skeletal muscles to do the job. In fact, you should absolutely get in the habit of keeping your hip oriented towards your dog pretty much all of the time. If you go back and look in this lesson, you'll notice I've been pointing a hip down leash for this entire practice session. Another consideration is your arms. With the exception of some of the transitional moves, keep them close to you. A lot of people let their arms go out. The farther the leash anchor gets from your center of gravity, the easier you will be pulled off balance, even with a small dog. It's important to start thinking about making your body do more work than your arms. Most people do all of their leash handling with their arms. Your core and your legs are way bigger muscle groups that work better together and are all centralized around your center of gravity. When you're in a jam, Brace a leash anchor to your center line or to your opposite side hip for maximum stability. Your feet should be shoulder width apart. Unlock your knees and keep them bent. Keep your feet canted at about 45 degrees with heel toe alignment. Bend your knees deeper to lower your center of gravity if necessary. And just a quick side note here, it blows my mind how many people we work with that do not bend their knees. We tell people, bend your knees all of the time, able-bodied folks mind you, and they just 
can't seem to do it. So along with all of the stuff we're talking about in this video, bend your knees. Now, even if you have limited mobility, many of these principles can still be applied. We've worked with people of all ages and even people in wheelchairs, and you can usually still adapt and make accommodations to fit your personal situation. That's why these are all templates so that you can take the main principles and reapply them in new contexts. Hmm, sounds suspiciously like dog training in general. No matter what though, keep your wits about you and keep your feet under you. This next set of technique templates shows you some more ways that you can deploy these tools. Again, practice these in neutral settings so you're comfortable with them before you need them. Just like your dog, you need to develop the motor skills and start imprinting some muscle memory. The rising finger lock is for taking up excess leash efficiently. This helps get a dog into control range quickly. With the palm facing you, your forefinger rises up underneath and makes contact with the leash and slides down the length of it. Once you're at the length you want, rotate your hand, palm down, and catch the leash with your thumb. Spread your other fingers out and bring them over the strap. Close your hand over the leash and allow everything to lock into place. You should end up with a finger lock. Do this at least 10 times or more until it's smooth and fast. I use this one all of the time to take up slack quickly. This one is especially useful for long lines too. Like the rising finger lock, the sweeping thumb lock takes up available slack very quickly to get your dog into control range. However, this is best done for changing direction and leaving quickly. This is a tough one, so pay close attention. Several things are going to happen at once. In the A variation, sweep your other hand in towards the leash, palm down. You'll catch the leash in the webbing between your thumb and forefinger. Bend your knees, pivot on your lead foot, and bring your trailing foot around to the front your body will rotate 180 degrees. Simultaneous with this, rotate the sweeping hand so the palm faces you, and as you pivot on your foot, continue the rotation so that the palm is facing upwards. This lays the leash over your thumb and across your palm. Close that hand and bring it to your center line. At this point, your other hand could regrip the leash for a baseball bat grip. Practice this one at least five times. The B variation is only slightly different. Use your shoulder to draw out excess slack through your other hand. Sweep your main hand down in front of your other hand and catch the leash in the webbing between your thumb and forefinger. Rotate your main hand so your palm is facing you. See if you can nail this one five times in a row. The sweeping thumb lock has a lot of moving parts, so practice this one until it all makes sense in your brain and fits together for you smoothly. So you can even do that same move from the rising finger lock. Technically, you can even do an accordion sweep. For regular loose leash walking, I recommend choosing a side and sticking to it, and we've even got an old video on that. During the process of teaching loose leash walking, we use an opposite side hold where the leash goes across your body. For those students of ours that have completed their walking training, we use the same side hold. This is probably what I use 90% of the time except for training phases. Also, when you're working on rebooting big behaviors like reactivity and aggression, it's better to use a same side hold for these instances as well. This keeps your dog in control range and increases the speed at which you can respond. There will also be times in public when it's recommended to switch sides to put yourself as a buffer in between environmental triggers and your dog. Since your thumb is the base platform, just open up the bundle and hang it off your thumb and pass it to your other hand. Practice this with a decoy until it feels nice and smooth. Switching sides keeps your dog from provocative stimuli and you can also use this to navigate tight spaces. This also highlights for you why it's important to be ambidextrous in your handling. <sighs> Take your time with all of this stuff away from your dog until you feel comfortable doing all of the leash positions and moves and try to be ambidextrous with this stuff. Be prepared by working out the kinks in rehearsal before you end up on your face. Now, smaller dogs can be trickier mostly because the leash will be slightly longer due to their height and they're easier to accidentally step on. Be mindful and customize these templates for your dog and your needs. I have to say though, even with the real little guys, very little has to change. Now, questions for you. There's a lot more I can show you with this stuff, so would you be interested in seeing more? Also, what are some other things you'd like to see Simpatico make videos about? Let us hear from you in those comments. 
If you found this video helpful, don't forget to thumbs up this video and smash that subscribe button if you haven't already so you never miss any of our videos. As always, keep learning, keep practicing, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.